Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Tech Tested. Today we're going to find out if I wasted $100 or if a 14 core Xeon was the best purchase I've ever made in computer hardware. Now the CPU in question is none other than this. This is an engineering sample Xeon E5 2695V3 set up for the LGA 2011 V3 socket. I was able to purchase this CPU through AliExpress. Yes, that beloved site that has all the quirky hardware. Now there are a lot of CPUs available on AliExpress, including a lot of engineering samples. The reason I picked up this particular sample is because I thought it represented an excellent price to performance ratio. Now the big elephant in the room is why did I purchase an engineering sample? Well, the retail sample of the E5 2695 V3 has a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz and a max turbo boost on I think two cores of 3.6 gigahertz. Now it's relatively known that some engineering samples have unlocked multipliers. However, that's not the norm. Now let's explain a little bit of what engineering samples are in case you don't already know. Essentially, it's a prototype CPU that manufacturers use in order to figure out any bugs there may be on the platform. They also use them to find out what these CPUs are capable of doing at certain frequencies and certain loads. Sometimes these CPUs can clock very well, but that's always limited by the voltage and the number of cores available. Typically, the more cores you have, the lower frequency you have to run in order to reach a certain power limit. That's why a lot of the lower core count Xeons have higher frequencies and a lot of the higher core counts have lower frequencies. Now, one of the risks of purchasing an engineering sample is it is a prototype. There could be flaws in the CPU that you are completely unaware of. And since it's an engineering sample, you have no guarantees, especially when buying it from a secondhand site like AliExpress. So why did I pick this particular engineering sample over others? Well, this one actually has a lower clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz. You might be thinking, well, that's a performance loss. You should have just bought the regular 2695 V3. And you might be right. However, I am speculating that because of the lower frequency, this is an early engineering sample with an unlocked multiplier, meaning in theory, we can overclock it. Now, I haven't tested this yet. You guys are getting a firsthand experience as to whether or not I wasted $100 on the CPU plus shipping, which was around $14, or I made a very good purchase. I don't know, it, it, it might have been a really bad idea. But what I've done is I've set up my X99 test bench in order to see if it does have an unlocked multiplier. The motherboard we're going to be using is an Asus X99 Deluxe. Now, there are a lot of weird things about this particular motherboard, and if you want to see me do an entire rant video on that, leave a comment down below. Still, we have the i7-5930K running in the system with XMP memory profiled enabled, causing it to clock to 3.75 gigahertz. We ran Cinebench R15 because that's the CPU test I'm most familiar with to get a baseline reference for a six core X99 CPU. I also ran Cinebench R23 because that puts a high AVX load on the CPU, which both of these should be running at some point. In R15, we got a single core score of 148 and a multi-core score of 1,112 not too shabby. In R23, we got a single core score of 891 and a multi-core score of 6,598. Now what I'm going to do is reboot the system, disable XMP, because a lot of Xeons from what I understand don't support it and that raises the BCLK up to 125. After that, we're gonna remove the i7 and then install our 14 core Xeon. So let's get to it. Okay, XMP has been disabled and we are now going to remove the i7 and install the Xeon. So I wanna show you guys the difference in size on the integrated heat spreader and the CPU itself. You can see that the 14 core Xeon is significantly wider. Um, you can see the actual chip itself is wider than the i7 because it has so many CPU cores. So we're gonna go ahead and install it. Um, 
I hope I'm installing this right. I do not do, um, let's see here. How did this come out? I think it, wait, there's the arrow. And here is the arrow. So I guess it goes in this way. I hope, I really hope I don't break this. I am not that familiar with this platform. So. All right, it's the moment of truth. I'm gonna power it on. Now I do have the second latest BIOS revision. I considered upgrading to the latest BIOS revision, but according to the website, it did not actually improve Xeon support or any CPU support at all. I forget what the bug fix was it. I think it was just Intel security stuff, but I'm gonna power it on and see if it actually boots. There's a good chance this thing actually doesn't boot at all, which would be extremely disappointing, but we're gonna give it a shot. So here goes nothing. Okay, I thought we ran into a postcode error. But no, the keyboard just illuminated. Hey, we're booting! Yes! Yes, we're booting! I'm super excited. Okay. Um, new CPU installed, F1 to run setup. Okay, so we're gonna try a couple things here. I it, It's getting me straight into the bio, so we're gonna hit F7 to get into advanced mode. Um, this is, guys, this is the moment of truth. I'm super excited and super nervous at the same time. So, um, if we go to AI Tweaker and we go to Manual. Oh, um, it put the CPU strap automatically at 125. Uh, sync all cores. Um, DDR4 2666. So, uh, what does it do? Okay, let's set it to auto. So at auto, it puts the core ratio at 30, which doesn't make any sense to me. It should be at... I think it should be at 22. I don't know. I really don't know. This is, this is, I'm, I don't know what to do. So we're just gonna go to manual and um, actually we're gonna go to XMP. We're just gonna go balls to the wall. Oh, there's the 23. Okay, so there's the 23 that we expected. But at 23, I don't know guys. Um, according to AliExpress, this has a CPU frequency of 2.2 gigahertz with a base frequency of 125 and a multiplier of 23 that's obviously going to be significantly higher so what we're going to do is just go to uh save changes and reset um with a cpu core ratio limit of 30 and a base ratio of 23. so let's see cross our fingers see if it works gosh this is nerve-wracking this is really nerve-wracking the reason I'm nervous is because if this works, this is going to be replacing the Xeon E5 1680B2 in my main rig. And I can't tell if it's working. Overclock failed. Okay, so that didn't work. Um, gosh, I don't know what to do. All right, so we're gonna go to F7. Um, we are going to go to AI Tweaker. We're gonna disable XMP. We're going to go to manual. And then we're just gonna try to increase the multiplier. Um, let's see if we can go 20. 24. <gasps> okay, so it did it did allow us to do 24. It did enable 24. This might be an unlocked CPU. We'll see if it works. Let's see. I haven't even booted it stock. I probably should have done that. But uh, save changes and reset. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we are at 2.4 gigahertz in Windows. If it boots, I'm nervous and excited because if this works, I'm just going to be overclocking the snot out of this thing, and it will go in my main rig, and we'll do a main rig update. Uh, no, what am I doing? Need to get into Windows. All right, CPU Z. Come on, come on, 24. 2.4 gigahertz. Let's see if we can get it higher. So, well, actually, we're gonna we're gonna load optimized defaults and see what it says under optimized defaults. Smashing that delete button like a pro. Okay, so F7 just because I like that version better. Load optimized defaults. Okay. What does that put our multiplier at? It doesn't even show us what the multiplier is at, does it? CPU core ratio, ratio is at auto. Okay, exit, save changes and reset. Okay, we're going to see 
If this increases our max multiplier within Windows, then we haven't confirmed anything yet. So my excitement may have been ill-founded, but we're going to find out. Also, the lines you see on the screen, if they're there, are because of my capture card. I'm actually recording all of this footage for this monitor on my main PC, so that would be why that's happening. So it's showing our max multiplier as 28, so we weren't overclocking, which is disappointing. So we were actually underclocking. So I got excited for no reason. So we have to go higher than 28. Okay, AI tweaker, manual. Okay, sync all cores, it's set to auto. Let's do 29. No, no. No, 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 no. It's locked. When I try to go to 29, it defaults back down to 28, which means it's got a locked multiplier. Dang it. I don't know. I think I screwed up. Basically what I'm trying to do now is BCLK overclocking by using the CPU strap, which isn't gonna get us where I wanted to go. This probably isn't gonna work. It boot cycled, which means there's a really good sign it probably won't work. And my dog's howling. Yep, overclocking failed. So F1. My dog won't stop barking. I screwed up, guys. I should not have bought this. This is why you don't buy engineering samples. All right, I guess we're gonna see how this CPU performs relative to the i7 at 2.8 gigahertz, which sucks. Okay, CPU-Z is up. Let's rerun the benchmark. So on all cores, we're running at 2.5 gigahertz, which is not fast. So in workstation applications, this will probably perform better than my Xeon. But in gaming applications, there's a really good chance we're gonna be doing a lot worse because I'm guessing it only turbos up to that 2.8 gigahertz. Ah, <sighs> dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. So what's the takeaway from this video? Well, I think it's pretty clear. You don't buy engineering samples hoping for an unlocked multiplier. There are examples of them out there, but there is no guarantee that that's what you're going to get. And despite my attempts at a discerning choice, it just didn't work. So I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this CPU now. It's, I just don't know. We might build a server out of it, maybe, who knows. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on our social media platforms and check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some tech test and merch. And there's a good chance this i7 is going back in that system because at least you can overclock it, right?